Hey everybody, it's Dana. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. Today we are still playing with rainbows because that's what I'm doing in my craft room lately. So for today, I had already made a sample card to give away to someone and I wanted to show you how I did it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the pink in main. This is bright side. I absolutely love, love, love this stamp set. There are some cards up on my blog featuring this stamp set. And today we'll have another one. I have all the supplies and everything and the colors I use over on my blog. So let's get started. I am using the Reef Builder by Gina K. I've been seeing a lot of people using this uh, template and for the life of me I don't use this very much so once I was inspired by Simon Hurley and Jennifer McGuire I decided to pull it out of my stash and start making a card I'm working with Nina solar white cardstock and I've already cut this cardstock to fit that little center area and that is three and three-fourths by three and three-fourths inch square Next, I'm going to come in with my rainbow. Now, this is a rather large um, image, so I'm not going to get full coverage around, but I'm going to show you how to remedy that later. Next, I'm coming in just with one of the little clouds, and I'm just going to place that off to the left side of my little rainbow. I want to have a little cloudy background with this and that's why I decided to use my reef builder because I can always keep that little cloud in the same spot every time I turn. Now I'm going to use my ink on three. This is the blackout ink because I'm going to be using Copic markers. So I will go ahead and tap that on to this adorable rainbow. And like I said, I've had this wreath builder for quite some time, and I think I was a little bit intimidated to play with it. But now since it's out and it's been on the corner of my desk now for a couple of days, I was like, oh yeah, I could easily use this to make a really cute background. I'm going to stamp the rainbow one more time because this is a newer stamp set and it still has a little bit of tackiness to it. It didn't stamp as crisp as I wanted it the first time. So I'm just going to double stamp that. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and remove out that rainbow because I don't need that rainbow anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off my Misty. And I'm going to turn this twice. So that was two turns. So I'm just going on the corners of this image. I'm okay if my clouds end up overlapping. That's totally fine with me. So I'm gonna go two times around again with that tool. Go ahead and stamp down my next cloud. And I'll go around one more time skipping two spaces so I'm right back into the square and then I'll go ahead and stamp that last little cloud. Now this is a fun way to make a really cute card and also have a great graphic element with having all the clouds around it. Now since that's done I'm going to remove that cute little cloud and I'm going to put it on an acrylic block to finish off the rest of this. I have this adorable little pink and main acrylic block, which I absolutely love. I have them in all three sizes and they're perfect for filling in those little spaces that you need. Now, again, because the rainbow itself was a lot larger, I could not do the corner turns with my, my little jig I had, but that's not a big issue because I can just use that stamp block and fill in the areas that I need to be filled in. Now don't forget, anytime you're making a background, fill in as much as you can with the whole image, but also make sure that you stamp some of the image off of the page as well. So it just looks like the paper continues on and you don't get like funny little blank corners. I like to do this and always make sure that the image is going off of the page so it kind of looks more like designer paper and it's not like we just cut it and forgot about the corner pieces. So I'm just going in, you can see just with like the tips of 
the little clouds filling in some of that white space. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can also use a smaller little um, image to fill in those spaces for you. All right, so next we're gonna do some Copic coloring. I always, anytime I start Copic coloring, coloring, I always go for my hex chart. I got this from Sandy Allnock. I'll put a link to it below. And I always color on a clipboard that has some paper underneath it. It's a hot mess is where I scribble off my pa my markers or I kind of test it out to see what it looks like. But I decided to get rid of all that because it was a little bit of a distraction. So now let's start the coloring. I'm going to come in with my rainbow order, which is my red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And anytime I Copic color, I like to be able to see where the tip of my pen is when I'm coloring something round. I always want to make sure I can see the tip. So you will see that I constantly like rotate my image. I am like one of those people who rotate anytime they color because I like to see exactly where the tip of my marker or my paintbrush is so I know I don't go over the lines. This is just a habit for me now. I started it when I first started Copic Markers and it just makes it a little bit easier for me to stay within the lines and not get any of that color outside of the lines. And I would tell you, red is a very tricky color to kind of remove once you have it down. So that is really one of the reasons that I totally make sure that I can always see the line when I'm doing my Copic coloring. So go ahead and finish that one off. And now I have down my one base color and look how perfect it looks. All of the colors today are coming from the uh, fluorescent colors. So I'm using a lot of the bright colors today. The only bright one was that red at the top. That's not one of the fluorescent markers. That one I believe was uh, RV25. But again, I'll have everything listed over on my blog of all the Copics that I use for this today. Now I'm just going to finish up and you can see I'm turning it so I see where that tip is and I know I'm always coloring in the lines. Now I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit because I don't wanna make you a little bit too dizzy as I rotate my paper. But if you have a hard time staying within the lines, I would suggest that you do this. I would suggest that you turn your artwork so you can always see where the bullet tip is or the pen tip is when you're coloring. It just makes it a little bit easier that you know you won't go outside the lines. All right, now since that's done, I do wanna add some depth to this. So I'm going in with coordinating colors that are just a shade or two a little bit darker. And I'm only putting that color towards the bottom part of my rainbow, towards the part that will be like reflecting up of the clouds. And I think I've told you guys this before, when I color, I don't really go into the whole light source thing. I just like to color, especially when it's simple coloring. I wanna be happy when I color. I don't wanna be stressing out over it. Now for the clouds, I didn't wanna leave them white. So I decided to add a little bit of a blue tint to them because to me, they were just a little bit too stark white. You can also do this with shades of gray if you want to, warm grays or cool grays. I just decided to use the blue because I just think that kind of reminiscent of the sky. So I'll fill that in and I've used the lighter of the blues. And now I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle. This is with my shimmer pen. And wait till I tilt this up and you guys see all of this sparkle on here. This is my Wink Stella. And look at all the sparkle I get on that. I'm going to go around and add a bit, a little bit of that sparkle to my clouds as well. So I have everything nice and glittery. To kind of quote ground those um, clouds, I'm just going to put a little bit of a fine line of gray, just so it gives the clouds a little bit of like dimension, like if they're moving and they're just not flat on a card, almost like a shadow. I kind of like to do this any time I have something that I've colored or kept white, just to make it look like it's popping off the page. I'll go ahead and finish that up. As you can see, super easy, quick coloring, nothing fancy about this. And then look how shimmery 
this gorgeous rainbow is. It's so pretty. All right, now it's time for us to go ahead and get this onto a card. Now, even though I have this cut down, I want to have some color at the tops and the bottom of this in the same colors I was already using. So this is my tip. I take a white piece of paper. This is also Nina um, 80 pound cardstock. And I'm going to grab those same markers that I used to color the rainbow to give me some colors across the top and the bottom. So I'll first come in with that red. I'm going to move my paper down just a little bit because I don't wanna get this red interfering with my clouds. And I'm just gonna start putting down some color. Now I wanna at least get three colors on the top of this card. So I'm just going to put a little mark where I want my red to come in. I'm gonna put a little mark where I want my yellow to come in. And then I know my orange is going to sit in between those two colors. So now I have where my colors need to go and now I can kind of start building up the rainbow on the top and the bottom. So I'll just come back in with that Copic marker and I'm just going right back and forth very, very quickly, just with some of the color. And then to, when I get towards the middle where that orange is, I need to make sure that that orange blends between those two colors. So first I'm just gonna come in directly with the marker and you're gonna see I have some streaking on that red side where that orange and the red don't go perfectly together. Next, I'm going to grab the tip of that orange and do a tip to tip off the red. And that's gonna help me blend those colors together where they kind of just kind of flow into each other. This is a great way to get colors that don't normally blend very well together to blend smoothly. So that's a great tip. Anytime you have like a purple and a blue that you want to blend, but it's not blending, do that tip to tip technique. And then you'll find that it seamlessly goes together. Now I'm doing the same thing with the yellow, just kind of going over that yellow and orange where it meets up. And then look how gorgeous that is. I have those same exact colors on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna add a little bit of more of that yellow to make sure I have it wide enough to fit all across the card. Remember, I'm only doing the tops and the bottoms. I'm not doing the sides of this. Next, I will darken up just that area in the corner. I realized there was a little bit of a white space. I just wanna make sure my rainbow is flowing. Next, I'll pull that up and you can see how pretty those colors blend together. Now let's start across the bottom. I'm going to first start with that green. And again, I'm just going to put down a little bit of that color and bring it in just a tad bit because remember, I'm trying to fit three colors here. I'm gonna go all the way to the right side and come in with the purple. And now I know that right in the middle, I'm going to add that blue. Now you'll see here that the blue and the purple, they're not blending very well. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And then when I put the blue with the green, you're still kind of seeing that it's not blending well. Again, go back in and we're gonna do that tip to tip. So I'm gonna bring that green in. And next I'm going to go ahead and take some of that blue, pull it all the way over, and then come back in with that purple. Now you'll see that purple and blue do not mix very well together. So this is where you definitely wanna do your tip to tip application to get some of that purple and that blue to kind of love on each other and blend yourself out. So I'm taking the blue and I'm just picking up some of the color from the uh, purple marker and kind of blending that in so that line isn't as harsh. I kind of want it to be a little bit softer. And then I just take my marker and scrape it off on a side piece of paper just to kind of clean it off so I don't have that residue left over. But this is a perfect way to get your colors to blend. Now I'm gonna have a great design at the top and the bottom. And I'll just go ahead and trim this out. Now since I have that trimmed down, I did wanna matte this on black. 
but look how pretty that looks with having that color at the top and the bottom. It really just gives the eye continuous co uh, color all the way around. Next, I will go ahead and grab my um, ATG gun and I'm just going to stick this piece right on to that black cardstock. I love using black anytime I do a rainbow. For some reason to me, I always feel like it grounds your image. And I'll be sure to link to my latest video using rainbows still um, up here in the corner and then in the description box below. I share several ways on how to make some really nice rainbow backgrounds. So I'll go ahead and place that down, leaving me a a quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch uh, border all the way around. I'll bring my paper trimmer in and this is my tonic studio one and I think I've told you guys before in previous videos this is my new favorite um, paper trimmer. It sits right on the corner of my desk and it's super super handy. I'll line that up and then go ahead and press that down. Now I have this gorgeous background. For the card base today, I'm going to use my e, um, EK Success Tools scoreboard. And I like to score it with the little bone folder that comes with it. But when I go to fold it over and to crease my edges, I like to use my Teflon bone folder. I just find that I get a better um, crease when I use that bigger bone folder. Now I am going to trim this card down because I just want it to be a four by four card and I don't have all that white space at the bottom. So I'm just going to have a little bit of a white border all the way around and then I can trim down any excess that I need. So again, I'll bring back in my paper trimmer. I am going to trim a little bit of the white card base off to the side. When I went to score it, it did not score perfectly. Now I can turn it sideways. And again, this is going to be, uh, I think this is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter, I believe. And then I will um, have a square envelope for this to go into. So I'm just gonna make sure I hold down that plastic guard and then I can crop that down. And then I have a cute little square card. And I don't make a lot of different shaped cards. I'm usually always the standard A2 size. So this was a little bit uh, of more fun for me to make today. I'll go ahead and pop this up onto that white card base. And we're gonna have such a pretty card. Now, since I have two of these, you saw I already made one. I would be willing to send this one to one of my crafty friends. Just make sure you leave a comment below on how you like to incorporate rainbows into your crafting. And I'll be sure to pick a winner and send this card to you. I went ahead and stamped one of the sentiments from the bright side stamp set from um, Pink and Main onto some black cardstock. Again, I really love the way the black plays off with all the white and all the colors. I already had that stamped off to the side, ready for a card. And then I'm just going to use some 3M foam tape. I'll pop that right on the back. And then I'm just going to pop that down towards the lower right hand side of my card, not to cover up that gorgeous rainbow. And then just for some added color, I went ahead and grabbed out some um, enamel dots, matte enamel dots, and these are from Doodlebug and the colors matched perfectly with today's card. And that's going to be the card today. You guys can see other pictures of it over on my blog. I will see you guys in another video soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.